All right, here we go. The CEO of a tokenized security exchange, the tokenized security exchange, Currency.com, Ivan Goan, come on down. (sighs) What a domain name, Currency.com. Are you serious? That's awesome. Hi. Hello. Can you hear me? Mic's on. Great. Um, So I'm just going to take 15 seconds of your time and ask you to reach into your pocket, for those of you that don't have your phone out, and go to currency.com, and you'll see a bit more about what we're going to hear about over the next uh, 15, 20 minutes. So um, we've been looking at the crypto uh, world for a very long time. I I come from a traditional capital markets trading uh, background. I spent 15 years at, at one of the global leaders. Uh, building award-winning platforms uh, for people to trade the markets. And, you know, the the crypto world is uh, a really exciting uh, technological uh, change, um, but it's also brought in a whole new uh, generation of people who who enjoy investing, who enjoy trading. Um, And uh, we've looked at the space, looked at what it's provided to people, and, and looked at how we can participate in that space. Uh, and we want to talk about some of that today. Um, Currency.com is the first uh, regulated tokenized security exchange in the world. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what we mean by that and, and what it provides. Um, and, you know, what, one of the challenges with, with investing and trading is understanding what you're investing in. And, and what are the risks behind it? How do you value what you're investing in? Um, uh, and what the, the future of that might look like? Uh, and this is uh, an area of, of crypto exchanges that most of us in the room, I, I presume, have experienced to some degree um, and uh, has, has brought a lot of innovation to, to the space, to how we understand what things might be worth and, and the types of innovation that can go with the business models behind uh, cryptocurrencies, utility tokens, platforms, what are now being referred to as security tokens. Uh, and I, I like to term more broadly uh, crypto assets. Uh, and I, I don't think uh, cryptocurrencies or utility tokens really embody uh, the full range of, of what is available. Um, and a lot of people have, have built some wealth in cryptocurrencies. A lot of people have built very successful businesses uh, using blockchain technology, driving innovation. Uh, but there, there is this problem that a lot of people have faced when trying to use some of those investments or assets in the rest of the financial world. And, and there's a really big disconnect, which, uh, you know, slowly as a community, we're starting to onboard uh, more of the banking community. Uh, and a lot of people that are pioneering within the blockchain and cryptocurrency space have come from traditional banking. Um, but, but there remains a large problem of anyone who's generating wealth in blockchain. Uh, you know, if you, if you own 100 bitcoins, it's great, but what can you do with them? Uh, and, you know, there's lots of stories that are well published of people trying to buy a house and using their bitcoin as a deposit. And the bank goes, well, hang on a sec. <laughs> Where did you get this thousands and thousands of, of dollars worth of bitcoin? Uh, you know, we're a bank, we don't know how to treat that stuff. It must be drug money or, or something really dodgy, right? And, and so that is a battle that the crypto community has faced. Uh, and I think slowly uh, regulators, governments are starting to understand, banks are starting to understand more and more about the crypto space. And, and you're seeing pioneering regulation start to address the gap between uh, what, what is uh, possible with, with cryptocurrencies. Um, and blockchain technology and, and kind of traditional securities and assets and, and how we value things. Um, so, you know, in many cases, the cryptocurrency holder uh, who has got some wealth there is, is kind of ring fenced off. And that, that poses a bit of a challenge. Um, and so the question then is what, what are available to people that hold Bitcoin? You know, and, and people talk about Bitcoin being a, a store of value and, and uh, something where uh, you can preserve your wealth, you can transact across boundaries, uh, you can transact quickly. Um, but many people want to go to fiat. Uh, 
And on the other hand, many people want to invest their Bitcoin in some other things that might be going up, and, and we've all speculated with some ICO tokens. Uh, we probably, most of us, have an account on Binance and other exchanges, and, and we've had the excitement of something rising very quickly and falling very quickly. And, and you know, some of us have been fortunate, some less so. Um, and you know, the, the, the sad truth of a lot of ICOs is that there, there is no underlying revenue being generated there. And so as an investor in those things, it's, a, it's an extremely high-risk venture that we're taking when we invest in, a, in an ICO token. Um, <clears throat> and so what, what have we done to try and address this, this problem? Um, and what, what we've done is we've, we've taken traditional markets and, and we've taken uh, for launch the, the 150 largest traded markets in the world. Uh, and this includes uh, US shares, uh, European shares, uh, gold contracts, uh, oil, um, and, and some of the world's biggest indices. And we've created tokenized versions of those securities and allowed people to invest in those with fiat or with their crypto. And the, the supported crypto are Bitcoin and Ethereum. Um, and so you can deposit your Bitcoin into our exchange. Uh, we are a regulated exchange, and so we do force you to upload all your documents and, and proof of ID. Um, and if you're transferring in large amounts of wealth, we need to understand where that's come from. And, and we're kind of coming at this, uh, this world of cryptocurrency at a stage where you know, there is an expectation that everyone will, will understand AML, understand that actually money laundering is not such a good thing, <laughs> generally. Uh, and, and, you know, I mean, we, we've all seen the sort of the, the scare stories that have been out there. Um, but in a very genuine way, you know, financing terrorism is not a good thing. I don't think we'd have anyone in our community that would want to facilitate financing of terrorism. And, and so, you know, there is this sort of general trend at the moment that we're seeing, which is, you know, regulators want to embrace innovation. Regulators and governments want to embrace innovation. You've got a real competing set of nations in, in lots of countries to try and establish new regulation that can oversee this in a, in a safe way and, and embrace it more. Um, and, and we're fortunate to be coming at this in a, in a time where, you know, from the very beginning, we're, uh, we're, we're very committed to adhering to regulatory expectations and standards. So... As I've, I've touched upon, there's, there's lots of markets you can invest in, uh, Bitcoin being one of them, Ethereum being another. Uh, and so, you know, as well as catering for the existing crypto community, it's very easy to come to our exchange, deposit some fiat, and buy your first Bitcoin. Uh, and you can withdraw that to your wallet uh, or use that to buy other shares. Um, <clears throat> and then this is, this is the other thing which is talked about a lot. Uh, which is something that a lot of us have got comfortable with to a certain degree if we've already been an investor in, in the crypto world for a number of years and, and there weren't any regulated exchanges. And so anyone who's invested in, in cryptocurrencies has had to get comfortable with the fact that a lot of these exchanges aren't, aren't regulated and some of them aren't domiciled anywhere. If you try and figure out who's behind them, where they're run, how is it run, uh, you know, who, who is the counterparty that you're trusting your money with? And, and that poses problems, and we, we've seen that very recently, uh, where, um, I mean, we don't really know the truth, right? But it would appear that for some amount of Bitcoin, it's possible to buy a death certificate in India. I don't know if that's true or not, right? But somehow, someone who is in charge of an exchange has disappeared, and with them have gone, you know, private keys to a large amount of Bitcoin. And this is your money, right? This is people who have trusted that exchange with their life savings, with their investments, with their speculative money. You know, for different people, it's different ranges of, of how important that money was to them. And, and this guy's disappeared. And no one knows the truth. We probably won't know the truth. Um, but that exchange has been able to be set up with no real governance and oversight over how those keys are stored. What is the ceremony for the custodian process? Who's followed it? How secure is it? What can go wrong? And you know, in, in areas like this, you know, this is where regulation can play a really important part to give a wider audience a, a degree of trust that they can embrace this new modern technology and invest in new things. And 
you know, we're all familiar with lots of other exchanges that don't really have a domicile, right? They're not based anywhere. You don't really know where they are. Uh, and, and so you need to get a degree of trust with them. And, and, and some people have had success with that, some haven't. Uh, but I, I think regulation plays a really important part in the wider adoption of, of cryptocurrencies. Um, and, you know, and, and that for us is, is the main reason why regulation is important um, and why we've set about bringing more traditional assets uh, to allow investors to invest with modern new uh, uh, cryptocurrencies and, and uh, limiting it to, to only some of the really big, uh, well-established, highly liquid markets. Um, oil is a properly traded global commodity. has real value in our economy. When the oil price goes up, we all feel it at the gas station, right? Our economies feel it. Um, and, and so we feel it's a really important thing to, to bridge this gap and open up new markets. Some of the world's biggest companies are traded on, on the US stock market. Um, and we're, we're excited to announce that our, our mobile app is now in the Android store as of today. Uh, and as part of that, we're going to be giving away um, 1,000 euros worth of, of Apple stock to anyone who signs up over this, uh, over this period. It, it, it's a competition. So if you sign up today or tomorrow, uh, we'll announce the winner on, uh, on Thursday. Uh, so, you know, how, how do you use the platform? Uh, what's it all about? Why is it interesting? Um, so, as I mentioned at the very beginning, I, I've been in uh, kind of technology building platforms for people who want to invest their money in the markets uh, for many years uh, and help build one of the market leaders in, in, in a, the global trading world. And we've taken a lot of what's available in traditional uh, trading platforms uh, and brought that to crypto. And, and for me, that's always been about putting our user at the center of, of what we're doing, creating a really nice, engaging experience, uh, building a huge amount of trust around that. Um, and so it has all the things that you would come to expect, including stops and limits and, and more sophisticated risk management, uh, uh, really nice charts with all the technical analysis that, that those of you that are traders are, are used to. Um, and there are lots of nice features that make it really easy to, to use the platform with price alerts and uh, notifications about big moves in the markets that you might be interested in, the uh, ability to trade in and out of the markets very quickly and reliably. Um, in terms of the, the kind of pedigree, so um, we have a, a sister company which uh, has a, a sort of similar domain uh, called Capital.com. And Capital.com is an FCA-regulated business. Uh, it's also regulated in Europe. Um, and the underlying technology of the order management system and, and the platform that sits above that uh, is the same technology with a lot of the same people that have, have built that platform. Um, and that platform has, has had three years of investment uh, as, a, as a group of, of two uh, partnering companies. We have 170 employees. Uh, collectively, we have over 300 years of, of experience in the financial markets mainly in the regulated financial markets. Um, and we pride ourselves on, on creating uh, experiences that have won awards on, on the trading side um, and that really put you know, fair, robust execution at, at the center of what we provide our customers. Um, and, and this is kind of underlying that point, really. Um, you know, we, we have a lot of people that have, have had experience in the markets for a very long time. Uh, and uh, very trusted. Here's some of the key facts about currency itself. Um, we've gone live with 150 assets. We went live on the 15th of January. Um, we invited in a, a thousand people, uh, some of whom I've met here today, uh, who were our, our early VIP testers of the platform, gave us lots of really useful feedback. Uh, some were kind enough to do uh, YouTube reviews on it. Um, and we had a, a waiting list that had 130,000 people on it in the first month, which was amazing. Uh, we were really pleased that we had that waiting list because it gave us a bit more time to build out some of the, uh, the scalability of our onboarding systems and, and document processing systems. Um, and we're now fully live. And uh, by the end of this week, uh, our developers are working really hard to take that number of assets up to 1,000. So we're going to see a real step change. Uh, in the month of April with mobile apps going live and, and 1,000 markets tradable. 
So our vision, uh, you know, really we want to bridge the gap between crypto and the world of crypto and, and traditional capital markets. Um, we're very committed to supporting our communities in lots of languages. Uh, we already support English, uh, Russian, Chinese, um, and we'll be adding further languages. Spanish is quite high up our priority list. Uh, hopefully we'll get to French for, for all the French people in the audience. Um, and you know, our, our, our initial uh, launch has included uh, all of the, the securities that you buy going on to uh, the blockchain. They are all ERC20 compatible tokens. So if you want to buy Apple, tokenized Apple shares, uh, then you're buying apple.cx and it gives you full economic entitlement to owning the underlying share. And we'll further invest in, in uh, what we can do to, to integrate with the blockchain. Um, right now, our matching engine, due to its scale and the volume of markets, uh, we couldn't find technology that would deal with, with the volume of updates that we need to be able to handle. Uh, and so as that technology matures, and we did a really detailed assessment around that, uh, we'll play a strong part in, in helping develop that technology and, and support it further. Um, and, you know, I, I think the other interesting area about tokenizing securities is that you no longer need to buy whole quantities of something. So, you know, the very famous share that some of us will be familiar with is uh, Warren Buffett's investment vehicle where, you know, before they did the share split, one share of, of Berkshire Hathaway A stock was somewhere in the region of $100,000. It's since gone to about $200,000. You know, and, and that presents a fairly large barrier to entry, right? Here's the best investor in the world in the last 50 years, and you need a large amount of money to buy a single share. And, and so that puts a fair old barrier to entry to a lot of new entrants. Um, there are lots of other markets which uh, are interesting that will be tokenized in the future. Uh, some of which aren't as readily available. So being able to buy a quarter of something, a tenth of something, uh, is a nice way of, of bringing this investment to a, to a wider community. So uh, to conclude, um, we see a, a really exciting opportunity for us to help bring Bitcoin and Ethereum into a wider uh, investable asset class. We also see it's really important for people who are investing to have other options available. I, I think, you know, there are some great projects out there, and I, I don't want to talk negatively about some of the really successful ICOs that are, have gone really well, uh, but there are also a number that, that have burned uh, a number of us. Uh, and so our, our positioning in this market really is to bring trusted, large enterprise uh, kind of in, investments to a, a wider community and help bridge that gap. That's it for me. <laughs> Open to any questions, if there are any. Okay. Thank you.